Hi, and thank you again for joining me, my friend, the Holy Spirit. This is Gift is a Wadi Love. We are in the Deep Dive series, and today we're going to start on page 61. But before we start, we'll start with a word of prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you so much for this wonderful time. Thank you for your grace, for your mercy, for your goodness, for your greatness, for Jesus, for your love that gave us Jesus, and Jesus, for the love that sent you to the cross for us. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that made it all possible. Thank you, Father, because of your wonderful plan. Thank you, Jesus, for your word made flesh and dwelt among us. And you chose and came down to take everything and to experience everything that we experience. That way, you can be able to sympathize with us. You can be able to advocate for us. You can be able to understand us. Thank you, Father, because this was an amazing plan. Holy Spirit, I thank you for empowering and enabling Jesus to be all that he was created to be, to come and fulfill that word that was written about him before the foundations of the world. We thank you because you're here, Holy Spirit, again, to help us to fulfill our purpose, to help us to understand and to give us the same guidance that you did give Christ to the glory and honor of God's name. We worship and adore you. We open our minds to you, our hearts to you, our lives to you. Open our minds to understand. Open our ears to hear. Open our, our spirits to receive. Open our eyes to see. But Lord, whatever you put in us today, I pray that it will grow deep roots and it will germinate so much. We will bear fruit that will last and that we will impact the world and that none of us will die before fulfilling our purpose on earth. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of your spirit, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. So today we're going to go ahead and start reading that second paragraph. When we believe in Christ and we receive him in our lives as the Holy Spirit convicts us, because the Holy Spirit is the one who helps us to understand and to know our wrong, we become born again of the Spirit. This is our, the conception and the birthing in the Spirit. Remember, Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. When Mary says, how shall it be? The Holy Spirit will come upon you. That's what the angel said. He will overshadow you and you will conceive. Because that which is born of the Spirit is spirit and that which is born of the flesh is flesh. So we are now coming into the age of where this is a spiritual thing. This is just not a fleshly thing. Every, a lot of people had been born. But now it was time for new birth in the Spirit to be born again. And the Holy Spirit is the seed of those who are being born again. So, look at Mary. The angel came to Mary. The angel told Mary that you're going to conceive a son. But then, Mary said, how? I'm not even married. I've not even slept with a man. How am I supposed to conceive? He says, yeah, this one, this one is a different kind of seed. It's going to be the seed of the Holy Spirit. And he will save his people from their sins. The second person who came to ask about this being born again, about this being born of the Spirit, was Nicodemus. When he came to Jesus, and he, he was part of the ones, the elders in the, in the church. I'm going to call them the elders in the church. And because everybody else was opposing Christ, he came to him in the night. He hid and he came to Jesus and he says, Wait a minute, what is all this going on? Can you tell me, teach me more of this? And Jesus said to him, Unless one is born again, they cannot enter the kingdom of God. And he wondered, born again? I've already been born. So the first thought process of any human being, we always automatically go into the fleshly or the worldly view. Why? Because that is where we are. The, our reality is more on, the, on earth than it is in the spiritual realm. So what you do? How can I? I've already been born. I'm already a grown man. How can I enter into my mother's womb again to be born the second time? And Jesus says, uh-uh. It's not like that. This is a spiritual birth that is only made possible by the Holy Spirit. And it's amazing. I want us to look at Nicodemus, the story of Nicodemus. And we are going to turn, turn with me in the book of John chapter 3 from verse 1. John 3, 1. There was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader, who was a Pharisee. After dark one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Even 
even when we are we are acting as if we do not know even when we are questioning we know that god has sent you to teach us your miraculous signs are evidence that god is with you what is evidence that god was with jesus the miraculous signs that god was performing jesus replied i tell you the truth unless you are born again you cannot see the kingdom of god what do you mean exclaimed nicodemus how can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again jesus replied i assure you no one can enter the kingdom of god without being born of water and spirit humans can produce only human lives but the holy spirit gives birth to spiritual life did you hear that humans can only produce humans life humans to humans without the holy spirit you cannot ever produce spiritual life so the holy spirit is the only one who gives birth to spiritual life i am i was given birth by the holy spirit jesus was an example of somebody who was born again jesus was born again by the holy spirit conception by the holy spirit when we are born again when we accept christ when we realize we are a sinner we want we change turn away from the wickedness and now we are we realize that we are sinners the holy spirit is the one who conceives us into the spiritual life the holy spirit gives birth to spiritual life so don't be surprised when i say to you you must be born again the wind blows wherever it wants just as you can hear the wind but can't tell where it, it, it is coming from or where it's going so you can't explain how people are born of the spirit how are these things possible nicodemus asked jesus replied you are a respected jewish teacher and yet you don't understand these things i assure you we tell you what we know and have seen and yet you won't believe our testimony but if you don't believe me when i tell you about earthly things how can you possibly believe if i tell you about heavenly things no one has ever gone to heaven and returned but the son of man has come down from heaven and as moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness so the son of man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life so he was trying to tell him the only way you're going to understand this the only way you can be born again is by believing in this son of man is by believing in christ in the suffering that he died for you he's going to be lifted up as a sacrificial lamb and that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life how through the holy spirit of god through this water and the blood that came from his side for this is how god loved the world he, he gave one his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life you see being born again is only possible by the spirit of god staying born again is only possible by the spirit of god realizing that you're a sinner is only possible by the spirit of god living a holy life is only possible by the spirit of god so he says after being born we ha- we cannot we cannot enter the kingdom of god unless we are born again after being born of the holy spirit at our spiritual birth then now the second thing that we do once we have received christ as our lord and savior we are born again then we get baptized in the water as a symbol of dying to sin and raising up unto righteousness in christ so you're baptized just like christ did christ was born again why the spiritual birth that he was given birth by the conceiving of the holy spirit in his mother's womb that is why jesus did not have to 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 be born again we are the ones who have to be born again by accepting him as our lord and savior then we are born again him he already came born again he already came a different seed he did not need to be born again by somewhere else that is why god the father 
the first thing he said you have you have to have a man who is already born again who is already transformed who is already the seed of the holy spirit and not the seed of, of a sinful man so jesus christ came born again already so because he was born again what happens that he showed us that's why he was telling john the baptist we have to fulfill all righteousness so he comes he's born again then he comes and he gets baptized john the baptist says no 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 I will not baptize you. Jesus says, no, you have to baptize me. Why? Because I am here as a born again Christian. I'm trying to show people how to live a, a, a holy life, how to live the way God wants us to live. So I have already been born again. Then now I need to be baptized and you immerse me in the water and dead to sin alive to Christ only. I am already dead to every, every uh, ways of the world. And now I am only alive to the ways of God. And immediately, as he came up from the water, the Bible says that God decreed and declared, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. The Holy Spirit was all over him. God the Father himself baptized him with the Holy Spirit and fire. Now, when you get baptized, then we need to be baptized by the Holy Spirit and fire. For those who ask. See, God the Father knew and he showed us. You get born again. You get baptized. Then you get baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. Why? Because for you to be able to fulfill your ministry, for you to be able to fulfill kingdom business, for you to be able to have the mind of Christ, for you to be able to have that different spirit, for you to be able to do that which you were sent to do, you cannot act and as if you are from the earth. You have to act like somebody who is like Jesus Christ. He was from heaven. The Bible says he has been in heaven. So he was from heaven. He came from heaven. Why? To do the works of the father. And the Bible says that Nicodemus told him that the works that you're doing are the ones that are telling us that you are sent. The miraculous signs are the ones that are telling us that the father is with you. Because nobody else can do these things apart from the one who has been sent from God. So have you been sent from God? Have I been sent from God? Are we performing the miracles and signs and wonders because God the Father is the one who is doing it through us? Only after you are baptized with the Holy Spirit of God. Remember before Jesus was baptized with the Holy Spirit of God, they did not record any miracles, signs and wonders. Why? Because it is the Holy Spirit of God who brings the works of God on earth. And that's why he said the finger of the Lord is up on earth. Why? Because course he has anointed me the holy spirit is upon me he has anointed me what does the holy spirit anoint us to do he has anointed me to preach the good news the holy spirit is the anointing upon which we preach the good news the holy spirit is upon me and this actually it made people very mad at jesus because they even tried they tried to kill him when he said the holy spirit was upon him the holy spirit of god is the one who anointed christ the bible says that in um, Luke 4, 16. So he came to Nazareth, who Jesus, where he had been brought up, his hometown, right? And as his custom was, he went on to, into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. He was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found a place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because... He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. So the Holy Spirit is the one who anoints the gospel. He is the one who anoints us to preach. If you have not been anointed to preach, then the gospel that you are preaching is just information. It does not have the revelation and transformation power because the revelation is brought by the Holy Spirit. And the transformation comes when the word and the spirit come together and the lives are transformed. You wonder why a lot of people's lives are not transformed. You wonder why you read scripture and you do not understand. The missing link is the Holy Spirit of God. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me who the holy spirit the holy spirit is the one who sends me to heal the brokenhearted those who have no hope those who have been brokenhearted the holy spirit is the one who heals them so he sends me to heal the brokenhearted he also sends me to proclaim liberty to the captives in other words to tell them hey get out to proclaim liberty deliverance 
to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. He is the one who is giving the revelation. The Holy Spirit is the one who recovers the sight of the blind, spiritually blind. The, uh, you're blind, your soul is blind, your spirit is blind, your body is blind. He is the one, the Holy Spirit, gives sight to the blind. And also to set at liberty those who are oppressed. The enemy oppresses in very different ways. He oppresses your spirit, your soul, your body. He is an oppressor. He is the one who just is there. His work is to destroy, is to oppress. He just makes you anxious. He just is an oppressor. But the Holy Spirit is the one who says, he sets to set at liberty those who are oppressed. The Holy Spirit of God. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. The Holy Spirit is the one who is saying now is the acceptable year of the Lord. Now is what God is doing. Now is what God is, has said. It's now time for us to do this. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So all bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth by who? The power of the Holy Spirit because he's the one who announced to preach the gospel. And they said, is this not Joseph's son? They even wondered. Are people wondering? Huh? Is this not Reverend Priscilla's daughter? Are people wondering? Huh? Isn't she the one we used to be here with at St. Teresa's? St. Teresa's girls. Hiya. Isn't this one the same one we used to go to, to, with in Mogoiri? Mogoiri girls there in Moranga. Yeah. Isn't this one the one that, that's from Keno? They are behind the shopping center. Who is this talking like this? The Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit of the living God. Is the distinguishing factor. He's the one who distinguishes the whole thing. The anointing power of the Holy Spirit of God, the minute he was anointed, the minute the Spirit of the living God anointed him, then all these signs and wonders started to perf he performed. Then he started to speak oracles of God, the life-changing gospel that made the poor rich. He started healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out demons. Why? Because he's taking out the oppression of the kingdom of darkness. Healing the sick that are oppressed by sicknesses and disease. Yes, he raised the dead by breaking this captivity. The dead that were killed before their time, he rose them up. You see, it was amazing that he saw this procession at the funeral and he understood that this boy is dying premature the spirit of death has taken him prematurely look at the mother this is not what god intended look at this boy he hasn't even fulfilled his purpose he stopped the procession and he says listen the spirit of the lord is upon me for he has anointed me to set the captives free now young man get up you are a captive of the spirit of death. Now I open you from your grave. Get up. He opened Lazarus from his grave. Hey, Lazarus, come forth. And he told them, can you set him free? Can you take out these clothes that you have wrapped him around? Can you unwrap him and set him free? For the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to set the captives free. To preach the gospel to the poor. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. To give sight to the blind. Those who have been blinded by religion. Those who have been blinded by, by doctrines of demons. Those who have been blinded to think that the Holy Spirit is just something that is an optional thing. I'm telling you, he is here to open your eyes. Because the Holy Spirit is not an option. He is a must-have. 
The Holy Spirit of God is a must-have for you to know God. The Holy Spirit of God is a must-have for you to even get to Christ. The Holy Spirit is a must-have for you to live a holy life. The Holy Spirit is a must-have if you are going to see the kingdom of God. The Holy Spirit is a must-have if you are going to operate in signs, miracles, signs, and wonders. The Holy Spirit is a must-have. A must-have if you are going to set the captives free. A must-have is if you are going to give sight to the blind. A must-have if you are going to be God on earth. A must-have is if God the Father is going to entrust you with the kingdom. Do you have this Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit of God, may you anoint us. May you help us to understand that you are the one who works in us. Only you working in us to will and to do for your good pleasure. Only you. Nobody else. Only you. Only you make the word become flesh and dwell among us. You are the one who made Jesus the word. You made it flesh and you made it manifested on earth, dwell among us. Now, Lord, the word that we have heard and the word that we hear, you are the only one who can make this word flesh and make it dwell in us and dwell among us and dwell in power. Bring it to work on this earth. Only by you, Holy Spirit of God, can we be born again. Only by you, Holy Spirit of God, can we stay born again. Only by you, Holy Spirit of God, can we fulfill our assignments on earth. And because of this, Lord, we yield to you. We yield to you. You are the preacher. We yield to you. You are the healer. We yield to you. You are the miracle, miracle working God. We yield to you. You are the one who opens the blind, the, the, gives sight to the blind. We yield to you. You are the one who heals the sick, raises the dead, and casts out demons. We yield to you. You are the one who fulfills the purposes of God through us in Jesus' name. And we yield to you today. Have your way, Lord God. Have your way, Holy Spirit of God. Have your way, everlasting Father. Have your way, eternal creator. You are the one who gave us breath. You are the one who heals us. You are the one who gives us the assignments. You are the one who tells us what we need to do. You are the one who gives us gifts. You are the one who, who distributes it according to your will, according to what you see and what you want to do. Oh, we yield to you, Lord, today. We receive you. Father, fill us with the Holy Spirit. Baptize us with the Holy Spirit and fire. Holy Spirit, in the fullness of who you are, live in us. By you we crucify our flesh and of our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to your sight. That we may please God. That we may be ready brides for Christ. We yield to you, Holy Spirit of God. In Jesus' name, heal the sick today. Raise the dead today. Cast out demons, Lord. In Jesus' name, may your power flow through our lives, through our families, through everybody around us. In Jesus' name, we pray, believe, and receive with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your power. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. We worship you. We honor you. We adore you. Hallelujah.